Hello, good evening, and welcome. Welcome, everyone, to this live telephone town hall. Thank you so much for joining us. We have just a few folks on the line right now, but we are dialing out to hundreds in your area. And with that being said, I'll go through this intro a couple of times here while we allow more and more people to join the call. So if you're just answering your phone, hello and welcome. You are live on the line with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns during this live telephone town hall, please go ahead and press zero on your phone keypad. You can do that now or at any time during this call. Again, that's pressing zero to submit a question. If you are participating on the web tonight, you can type in your question there. Go ahead and submit that question and I will read it over the air for you. You can also press seven to provide us with your email to receive future updates from the New Mexico DOT. And throughout this telephone town hall meeting, we will be sharing a lot of information for you. So, fe so please feel free to get prepared early on and grab some paper and something to write with. That information will include, again, just how to participate tonight along with important websites and contact information that may be very useful to you. So to quickly recap, if you are participating on the web, please go ahead and type any questions you may have in the comment box. You can submit that question and I will read that over the air for you. If you are listening on your phone, go ahead and press zero to get your question in line. If you don't feel comfortable going live with your question, no worries, just let your operator know and I will be more than happy to read those over the air for you as well. Whichever is most comfortable for you, either way, press zero to submit those. And lastly, you can press seven to provide the New Mexico Department of Transportation with your email address for future updates. So without further ado, I'd like to officially get this call started off by turning it, turning it over to tonight's facilitator, Jennifer Heyer. Jennifer, please take it away. Thank you, Taylor. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's virtual public information meeting event hosted by the New Mexico Department of Transportation. Thank you for joining us. You are live with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. We're excited to share with you information on the New Mexico 566 Bridge Replacement Project located six miles north of the Church Rock community. This bridge carries traffic on 566 over the Rio Puerco. This meeting is being held live and recorded for future posting on NMDOT's website, which is dot.state.nm.us forward slash NMDOT projects. As Taylor mentioned, my name is Jennifer Heyer and I will be facilitating this meeting on behalf of the New Mexico Department of Transportation. For those of you on the phone, if you would like to also watch the online video streaming, please go to linktr dot e e forward slash nm56. Again, that is linktr dot e e forward slash nm56. If you don't have immediate access to the internet, just continue to stay on the call line to hear our presentation. To request a paper copy of tonight's information, you may call me at area code 505-878-6577 or email me at j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot h-y-r-e at w-s-p dot com. Again, you can feel free to call me at 505-878-6577. Six five seven seven, or email me at j e n n i f e r dot h y r e at w s p dot com. We want to welcome our community members who are on the phone, as well as our online listeners. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Today, we will presenting the overall project, the process by which. NMDOT is developing replacement options and making decisions on bridge design for NMDOT's New Mexico 566 bridge replacement project six miles north of Church Rock. We will be having a live question and answer session after our presentation, which should be approximately 25 minutes from now. We will also have an interactive poll question for you to answer in just a couple of minutes. For those of you online, 
We are currently working on getting our presentation loaded up on the online platform, so just keep listening and keeping with us as we work through that. For those of you on the phone, just keep listening. If at any time during the presentation you would like to get your question into our queue, those on the telephone may use their keypad and press zero to ask a question. Or if you are online, you may use the chat box to ask your question, and we will take those at the end of the, question, at the, end of the presentation in about 25 minutes. If you don't have access to Internet and would like to request any of the materials, you may feel free to call me at area code 505-878-6577 to join our live video stream. You may go to L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash NM56. The information that we're presenting this evening, as well as a recording of tonight's meeting, will be available on the NMD DOT website, which is DOT dot state dot NM dot US forward slash NMDOT projects. At this time, we'd like to take a brief moment to recognize our elected and agency officials who are on the call joining us this evening. With Pinedale Chapter House, we'd like to recognize Vice President Clara Day, Coordinator Titus Nez, and former President Raphael. With the Church Rock Chapter House, we'd like to recognize Coordinator Vera Morgan and the other Church Rock Chapter officials who are with us this evening. With Twin Lakes Chapter House, we'd like to recognize President Norman John, as well as Community Service Coordinator Juanita Tom. And also on the call with us tonight, we'd like to recognize Larry Joe with the Navajo Nation Division of Transportation. Thank you, all of you, for being with us for this event. Next, I would like to hand it over to Philip Steinbeck to introduce you to our team members and the topics of discussion this evening. Philip? Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Philip Steinbeck, Project Development Engineer with New Mexico Department of Transportation. The NMDOT has partnered with an engineering firm called WSP to conduct this preliminary engineering study on New Mexico 566. I'd like to introduce our team that we be presenting this evening. You already been introduced to Jennifer Heyer, our environmental planner with the WSP team. We will also hear from Ray Trujillo, project manager with WSP, who will be presenting the project design to you shortly. Also on this call is Larry Maynard with the NMDOT District 6 engineer. Everyone I just introduced will be available to answer questions after our presentation. Our presentation tonight will talk about the project limits and purpose and need, existing conditions, proposed improvements, NMDOT's project development process, the anticipated schedule, next steps. Finally, we will end the meeting with a question and answer to address any of your submitted questions. The presentation is expected to last approximately 20 minutes, so we estimate around 6.20 p.m. to begin our question and answer portion of the evening. I'd like to reiterate, that we do not want to hear from we do want to hear from you the community on your concerns with the roadway and bridge the projects we are developing or any other questions or comments you may have with that i'd like to turn it over to taylor We may have lost Taylor, so I will go ahead and jump in here. We are getting ready to have our first polling question. Um, for those of you on the phone, you will be able to participate by pressing certain numbers on your keypad, and those online will be able to see it online. I yes, thank you so much, Jennifer. Sorry about that. I was on mute. We do have our first instant poll here. So just like Jennifer just explained, if you're on the phone, just go ahead and use that phone keypad. And then if you are on the web, you can go ahead and participate there. You can cast your vote on that website. So go ahead. We want to know, how did you hear about tonight's meeting? Press one for mailer. Press two for telephone calls. You can press three for newspaper and radio. 
press four for social media, or press five for word of mouth. So again, just voting right now, how did you hear about tonight's meeting? Press one for mailer, press two for telephone call, press three for newspaper and radio, press four for social media, or press five for word of mouth. And thank you everyone for weighing in there for us. We'd love your feedback to see how you heard about tonight's meeting. And I do want to remind everyone on the line, um, at any time during this presentation, you can provide your input by using zero on your telephone or by typing in the chat box on the web. So, and then you can also press seven if you would like to be added to our mailing list. And now I would like to turn it over to Ray to share some project information slides. Ray? Thank you, Taylor, and good evening, everyone. During my portion of the presentation, I will give you some background of the project limits, describe the existing conditions, and describe what the proposed improvements for this project will be. The project is located on State Highway 566, about six miles north of Church Rock, New Mexico. Church Rock is located seven miles east of downtown Gallup, New Mexico. The project limits are from milepost six to milepost seven, and the existing bridge that crosses over the North Fork of the Rio Puerto is at milepost 6.5. Next, I will talk about the existing conditions. The existing bridge at milepost 6.5 has been in service for 50 years and has reached the end of its design life. The bridge is experiencing significant concrete deterioration and is rated by the NMDOT to be in poor condition due to the bridge deck. While the bridge is rated in poor condition, one thing to keep in mind is that the bridge has been deemed by NMDOT to be safe to travel on until the bridge is replaced. The roadside guardrail along both sides of the bridge approaches that ties into the existing bridge rails is substandard, has some minor impact damage, and is in fair condition. Over the past 20 years, the existing channel that runs under the bridge has meandered to the north and is encroaching on the existing north abutment of the bridge. The result of this meander is large amounts of erosion around the north abutment of the bridge eroded bank, channel banks, and some silt buildup on the downstream side of the bridge. The existing pavement within the project limits is experiencing surface deterioration and cracking. The cracking is occurring in isolated locations throughout the project limits. Some segments of the highway, particularly near the bridge approaches, exhibit settlement and uneven pavement surfaces due to subgrade phasers. We've heard the local community's concern about pavement settling and deterioration at this particular bridge. The existing fence on both sides of State Highway 566 is sagging, loose, and cut in isolated case locations throughout the project limits. The fencing is in poor condition. Next, I will talk about the proposed improvements for this project. The NMDOT has determined that the existing bridge needs to be replaced. Due to the extent of concrete deterioration, concrete repair alone would be an expensive and short-lived stopgap. The expense and extent of construction required to rehabilitate this bridge from the bridge deck to the foundations was deemed too great and a bridge replacement was chosen as the best course of action. The new bridge will be as wide as the existing bridge, which is two 12-foot driving lanes and 10-foot outside shoulders. The roadside guardrail at the bridge approaches will be replaced with new guardrail meeting current safety standards. Replacement of the existing bridge will require the existing bridge to be closed down so that it can be replaced in its entirety. The roadway pavement leading up to the new bridge will also be reconstructed at this time to provide a smooth riding transition from the roadway to the new bridge. Prior to closing the existing bridge, a two-lane, two-way detour roadway will be built on the west side of State Highway 566 so that traffic can continue in both directions uninterrupted during replacement of the bridge and reconstruction of the roadway pavement leading up to the new bridge. Channel improvements will also be made while traffic is routed through the detour roadway. 
Channel improvements such as channel grading and channel arming will be done to protect existing channel banks and the new bridge foundations. The existing fencing within the project limits will be replaced in its entirety. Not just the wire fencing will be replaced, but the fence posts as well. Once the new bridge and approach roadway reconstruction is completed, the new bridge will be open to traffic. Pavement rehabilitation for the remaining portion of the roadway will, will be conducted at that time. Pavement rehabilitation will involve closing one lane at a time and using the flagman and a pilot car for detouring traffic. Pavement rehabilitation will only occur during daylight hours. At nighttime, both lanes in each direction will be reopened so that there are no traffic disruptions at night. That concludes my portion of the presentation. I would like to thank everyone for joining and listening in this evening. I now turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. Good information there. As a reminder, we will answer your questions in about eight minutes. Um, however, at any time while we're presenting, you can feel free to ask a question by pressing zero on your telephone keypad or by typing a question in the online chat box. Next, I will talk about the DOT's project development process and the schedule for this project. The project began in the spring of 2020 with a scoping study and bridge type study. The scoping study looked at the existing conditions and potential options for making improvements. The focus of the bridge type study was to determine what type of bridge would best serve this portion of New Mexico 566. The bridge type study determined a pre-stressed concrete girder similar to the existing bridge out there today would be the most cost-effective and feasible bridge type for this project. Shortly after the bridge type, we completed the detail scoping report, which identified the preferred method for replacing the bridge and making the roadway improvements needed for the project. To further the project, we conducted environmental investigations, which included a biological study and a cultural resources study. We've been working also on preliminary design for the bridge and the roadway needs, and today we're holding this public meeting to present our findings to you and get your feedback. We do still have a lot more to do on the project before construction. Our next steps on the project will include gathering public input tonight, tomorrow, and for the weeks after until March 24th. After that, we will finalize the environmental studies and documentation. We will continue with the project design and anticipate having final design plans developed by summer 2021. That will then allow the project to be let for construction with an anticipated start date of construction 2022. Well, now that you've heard from us, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to start taking some of your questions. You can ask us a question by pressing zero on your telephone keypad or typing a question in the online chat box. But if you need more time to give us your thoughts and questions, that's okay. You can email me or call me with your questions and your thoughts. My email is j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot h-y-r-e at w-s-p dot com, or you can call me at area code 505-878-6575. Seven, seven. We ask that you send us comments by March 24th. More project information and the visual aids for what was presented tonight, as well as contact information for the project team, will be available on the NMDOT website at dot.state.nm.us forward slash NMDOT projects. We will also have a recording of tonight's meeting posted to the website in the coming days. We will also have a visual PowerPoint presentation posted to the website as well. And we do apologize that we had some technical difficulties this evening and were unable to provide that to those of you who joined us online. If you uh, would like to uh, request any information or have questions, we're available through phone or through email. 
And with that, I would like to hand it over to Taylor to take our first question and our caller. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Yes, our first caller question is coming from Caroline, who would rather not go live. And just another friendly reminder, if you haven't done so already, or if you're just thinking of a question now, go ahead and press zero on your phone keypad. And again, if you're participating on the web, you can do so by typing that question into the, into the chat box there, and then go ahead and submit that. So with that, back to Caroline's question. She's wondering, will construction require the bridge to be completely shut down? Great question. Thank you for that. Ray, could you help us answer her question? Yes, Jennifer. Replacement of the existing bridge will require the existing bridge to be closed down so that it can be replaced in its entirety. The roadway pavement leading up to the new bridge will also be reconstructed at that time. Prior to closing the existing bridge, a two-lane, two-way detour roadway will be built on the west side of State Highway 566 so that traffic can continue in both directions uninterrupted during replacement of the bridge and reconstruction of the roadway pavement leading up to the new bridge. Thank you for the question, Caroline. And thank you, Ray, so much for the answer. And yes, Caroline, thank you so much for participating. Our next question here is coming from Joe in Gallup. He's asking, when will construction start and how long will it last? Thank you, Joe. We appreciate that. Ray, could you remind us when construction is supposed to start and how long it will last? Uh, yes, Jennifer. Construction will start in, in the spring of 2022. It is anticipated that the construction will last around eight to nine months. Thank you for the question, Joe. Yes, thank you, Joe, and thanks again, Ray. Our next question will go over to our web simulcast here. We have Edward um, with his question. Edward's asking, will access to my driveway be closed during construction? Good question. Thank you for that. Ray, could you speak to the construction? Oh, yes, Jennifer. Uh, driveways within the project limits will remain open during construction. The contractor will provide proper signage during construction to safely guide local residents onto State Highway 566. Thank you for the question, Edward. Thank you so much. Moving on here, our next question, we have Rachel, who, again, would rather not go live. Rachel's asking, why do we have to do this project now? Good question. Thank you for that. Larry, um, would you be able to, to help us answer that question? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, Rachel, thank you for that question. Uh, it's, it's not that we have to do the project now. It's that this, this bridge has reached its useful life of 50 years, and it's, it's now time to rebuild this bridge and begin repairs on the entire roadway, as we often do when we're doing construction projects. We like to do the corridor approach, and we'll, we'll be going through 566, repairing roadway and bridges that, uh, that need repair. And uh, it's, it's the right time to do it, and that's why we're doing it now. Thank you for that question. Thank you so much, Larry. And if you wanted to get in line with your question, just like Rachel did there, you can go ahead. You still have that opportunity to press zero on your phone keypad. And then again, if you are on the web, go ahead and type your question into that box. Also, another reminder here that you can still press seven to receive future email updates from the New Mexico Department of Transportation. So that is still another option for everyone listening in right now. Going to our next question, we have Sean on our web simulcast. Sean's asking, New Mexico DOT is replacing another bridge to the south near the frontage road. Will both bridges be under construction at the same time? Great question. Thank you for that. Um, Philip, would you be able to answer that question for us? Thank you, and thank you, Sean. There will be some overlap on these two projects. So expect there to be construction going on between both of them at, at an overlapping time. 
Okay, great. And I will just maybe jump in to reiterate there also that um, similar to this bridge replacement, that that bridge replacement to the south will also ensure maintenance of traffic during construction um, for both of those bridges. Thank you. Thank you both so much for that answer. Our next question here is coming from Anthony. Also on our on our web simulcast, Anthony's asking, you said the bridge needs to be replaced. So is it safe to drive over right now? Thank you, Anthony. Short answer is, it is safe to drive over. I will let Ray expand on that a little bit more. Uh, yes, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is correct that the bridge is safe to, to travel over. The NMDOT has bridge inspectors that check on this bridge at frequent intervals, and they have deemed the existing bridge to be safe to drive on until it is replaced. Thank you for the question, Anthony. Thank you so much. Moving on here, our next question is from Maria from Church Rock, who is not wanting to go live, but Maria is asking, will the NMDOT give preference to native-owned businesses when selecting a construction contractor? Great question, Maria. Thank you for that. Larry, could you help us answer her question? Certainly, certainly I can. Thank you for the question, Maria. The uh, state of New Mexico, we follow the procurement laws when we're spending taxpayers' money for capital projects, similar to the way we do with federal money that we received. The procurement laws require that we put together a set of design plans and a contract and put those out to bid. And by the requirements of state law, we're required to select the lowest bidder for this process. So it may or may not be a uh, Native American company that is the lowest bidder, but it will be a licensed New Mexico contractor. Also, within the contract, there is always language that has a Native American hiring preference. So if the contractor is not or is a Native American contractor, then they will have the ability and the requirement to have preference for Native American hiring for some percentage of the project. They, they screen all applicants for subcontract work and for applicants for their own company. And if a qualified individual of Native American descent is, uh, is found to be the best suited candidate for the job, they will be hired up to a certain percentage of the job. Hopefully that answers your, correct, your question correctly, Maria. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much, Maria, for participating tonight on our call. Our next question here is coming from Paul. He's asking, the road service route 11 to the north is in worse condition than the NM566 bridge and roadway. Why aren't you fixing that road? Thank you for asking that question. Ray, could you, would you be able to help us answer that question? Uh, yes, I can, Jennifer. The bridge in question uh, is located upstream from State Highway New Mexico 566, uh, which I believe is, on, well, well, as it said, is on Navajo Service Route 11. Unfortunately, the bridge is located outside the NMDOT's right of way and not a bridge NMDOT is responsible for. I would, however, suggest contacting the Navajo DOT to see if this bridge is owned and maintained by them, and if so, what their plans are for the bridge. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much. And our next question here, back over to our web simulcast here, we have Tom. Tom's asking, parts of NM566 are outdated with bumps, cracks, and other issues. How are you ensuring that the new bridge doesn't have any of these issues? Good question. Thank you for that. Ray, would you be able to elaborate to answer that question? Uh, yes, I can, Jennifer. Uh, this is one of the concerns local residences and community members have expressed to NMDOT in the past regarding this particular bridge. The new bridge will be placed on deep foundations, which will prevent settlement of the new bridge from occurring. 
The roadway approaches to the new bridge will be reconstructed to provide a smooth transition from the roadway to the new bridge. The reconstruction of the roadway approaches will involve the use of geogrid reinforcement mats placed in one foot layers to help reinforce the approach soils. Then uh, concrete pavement slabs will be placed on top. So the combination of the geogrid reinforcement mats and the concrete pavement slabs will better distribute traffic loads over the subgrade soils and minimize or prevent any settlement of roadway approaches from occurring. This method of construction, it's been used in recent years on many New Mexico bridges and around the U.S. with success. Thank you for the question, Tom. So already you can press 7 on your phone keypads if you wanted to receive future updates about this project. And Jennifer, it's looking like that's the last question that we have at the moment. I can go ahead and turn it right back over to you. All right, great. Thank you, Taylor. Um, as I mentioned uh, before we start our question,